Hi, welcome back to the Vietnam module lesson two. After World War II, we are staunchly against communism and we're gonna have a number of policies that reflect that. So one of the first Cold War policies that we have is the Truman Doctrine in 1947. And we promise to help any country that wants to fight communism. A year later, we'll pass the Marshall Plan economic aid to rebuild Western Europe so that those countries are not vulnerable to communism. So that's what I want you to write in your notebook. I want you to draw this little emoji with a face mask. You should already have this notebook titled Vietnam. So I want you to think of communism like the coronavirus. We don't want it to spread. We're trying to isolate the coronavirus. Nobody's allowed to go outside. We do not want it to spread. If one person gets it, then another person gets it, then another person gets it, and pretty soon it is taken over. So that's communism, right? Now in 1950, we'll pass the domino theory. And the domino theory is this idea that if one Southeast Asian country falls to communism, then they all will fall. The Truman Doctrine, the Marshall Plan, the domino theory, it's all to contain and isolate communism. JFK, LBJ, and Nixon. And this video shows you, in their own words, what they believed about the domino theory. So when the United States votes, $400 million to help that war, we're not voting for a giveaway program. We're voting for the cheapest way that we can prevent the occurrence of something that would be of the most terrible significance to the United States of America, our security. If we withdrew from Vietnam, the communists would control Vietnam. Pretty soon, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Malaya would go. If this little nation goes down the drain and can't maintain her independence, ask yourself what's going to happen to all the other little nations. If the United States now were to throw in the towel and come home, and the communists took over South Vietnam, then all over Southeast Asia, all over the Pacific, in the Mideast, in Europe, in the world, the United States would suffer a blow and peace, because we are the great peacekeeping nation in the world today because of our power, would suffer a blow from which it might not recover. So in 1954, we had the Geneva Accords, and the main goal of the Geneva Accords stopped the spread of communism in southern Vietnam. So at this point, the main Vietnamese leader in southern Vietnam is a guy named Diem. Diem, Diem, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about Vietnamese. And of course, the leader of the north is Ho Chi Minh. So at this point, we're going to split Vietnam up right in the middle at the 17th parallel in the same way we did in the Korean War. That country was split at the 38th parallel. Very similar situation. In July of 1953, the Korean War ended in a negotiated settlement and a still divided peninsula. American policymakers saw it as proof that communism in Asia could be contained. It ended in a ceasefire. We are still in a ceasefire with North Korea. If you wanted to foreshadow what's going to happen in Vietnam, just look back to Korea. So in 1956, we were supposed to allow for free elections and allow the Vietnamese to pick whether or not they want to be communist or if they want to be democratic. But two things are happening at the same time that will decide the fate of the Geneva Conference. So the French are fighting against the Vietnamese and at this point they are called the Viet Minh and they are considered a communist army. When the Americans fight the Viet Minh, they will be called the Viet Cong, VC. The French will not take our military advice and they will pay a very heavy price in the Battle of Dien Bien Phu. Now the French, they have the American money, they have their own money, they have their generals, they're very cocky, and they believe that this is a slam dunk win. But they are wrong. The Vietnamese, after centuries of subjugation, they will be the white man at his own game. Navarre was certain that superior French firepower and air support would crush any attack by the Viet Minh. He and his commanders saw no need to worry about the jungle-covered hills that overlooked his 11,000 men dug in on the valley floor. The artillery commander was so confident of victory, he complained, I have more guns than I need. General Zapp saw his chance. We decided to wipe out at all costs 
the whole enemy force at the Nbien Phu, he remembered. To do it, he pulled off one of the greatest logistical feats in military history, a feat that would be restaged in propaganda films and celebrated for decades. A quarter of a million civilian porters, nearly half of them women, moved everything he needed for a siege, from sacks of rice to disassembled artillery pieces, on foot, through the jungle. Zap surrounded the valley with 50,000 soldiers and 200 big guns, dug in and camouflaged so well they could not be spotted from the air. The French artillery commander, who had underestimated his enemy, committed suicide. The airlift of Dien Bien Phu continues. Vital men and supplies for the heroic garrison that has defied the massed Viet Minh onslaughts for over six weeks. Today, Dien Bien Phu is a... This is going to embolden many Vietnamese to support Ho Chi Minh. So in 1956, when that year rolls around, and when the Vietnamese are supposed to have their free elections, they know who will win. And it will not be Diem, the leader of the South. It will be Ho Chi Minh. So the 1956 elections in Vietnam do not happen. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. JFK becomes the president, and he's going to inherit a huge mess. Under Eisenhower, Diem will become the leader of southern Vietnam, and he's basically an American puppet. Diem is also very Catholic, and as a result of that, he's going to ban all Buddhist flags. When he puts this ban in effect, he does it during a huge Buddhist festival celebrating Buddha's birthday. And so there's going to be a lot of protests happening. The protests will continue, they'll become increasingly more violent, and so the Buddhists are going to do something that's going to blow everyone's mind. They're going to do something called self-immolation. And what that means is that they're going to set themselves on fire. And it's not going to be one Buddhist. It will be many Buddhists. Now, here's a picture of a Buddhist. I want you to really look at this picture and think about what you see. What do you notice about this picture? So, Diem's wife, her nickname was Dragon Lady because she wasn't a nice person at all. And so, when the media gets a hold of these images, this is what she had to say. What have the Buddhist leaders done? Comparatively, the only thing they have done, they have uh, barbecued one of their monks, uh, whom they have intoxicated, whom they have abused the confidence, and even that barbecuing was done um, not even with self-sufficient means because they they use uh, imported. Uh, okay, so JFK is our first and only Catholic president, which was very controversial. Diem is an embarrassment to JFK. And Diem is not ruling South Vietnam the way we want him to rule it. And Diem's people don't really trust him either. So Diem will be assassinated by his own generals, November 2nd, 1963. So the question is, did JFK know about the assassination? Because if he did, it would be our duty to let Diem know that, hey, your generals don't like you and they're planning to kill you. Because after all, it is the Americans who put Diem in power. When the media asked JFK, hey man, did you know that this was going to happen? JFK will deny it 100%. However, JFK will die 20 days later in Dallas, Texas. And when the media asked LBJ later on, if the administration knew about the assassination of Diem, this is what he had to say. They started with me on Jim, you remember. Yeah. He was corrupt and he ought to be killed. So we killed him. We all got together and got a goddamn bunch of thugs and we went in and assassinated him. Now we really had no political stability since then. So after JFK's assassination, LBJ will become our next president. And when he runs for re-election the following year, he's going to win. And although LBJ believed in creating a great society, he wants to have a war on poverty, he will have a war and his legacy will be the Vietnam War. 